Today, sir, you you are to be tried before Nero. <laughs> After more than two years, that for which I was brought to Rome is to take place. But Paul, sir, you can expect no justice whatsoever from Nero. To achieve his crown, he poisoned his stepbrother. He murdered his own mother, also his former wife. The details of the vice and iniquity practiced in this court are too degrading and horrible for description. Your condemnation before such a judge is certain. <laughs> From a human point of view, yes. But as long as I remain loyal to God, I have nothing to fear. God's will shall prevail. Well, the evidence is in. Now it remains only for Nero to make his decision. And we can expect no mercy from him. The decree will be guilty. The sentence, death. Quiet! Quiet! His Majesty Nero, Emperor of all the civilized world, has made a decision of justice. Hear ye! I have heard the charges against the prisoner and the evidence. The evidence does not sustain the charges. I, Nero, find the prisoner guiltless. Remove the prisoner's bonds. He is a free man. That cheering right after the trial, who was it and why? My dear Nero, those were Christians cheering for their champion whom you let go free to influence more people to become Christians and your enemies. My enemies? Is that what Christians are? You should have found him guilty and worthy of death. I shall, if I ever get another opportunity. And I will. <laughs> God does take care of his own. Yes. Contrary to the general expectations, Nero found you guiltless. In so doing, he unknowingly obeyed the will of God. Oh, freedom at last. Well, let's shake the dust of Rome from our feet while we still can. Yes, yes, yes. Come. Well, it looks like half of Rome is a fire. <laughs> you know, I like fires. Oh, but I'm glad the palace is safe. Yes? It is your personal servant, your majesty. Oh, and, uh... Rome is burning, your majesty. Yes, it's a great fire. I'm watching it through the window. At least half of Rome will be in ruins, your majesty. Uh, what of it? I'll merely tax the people heavier and rebuild Rome. Oh, who started the fire? I'll reward him. Ugly rumors are rampant, sire. Rumors about what? The fire, your majesty. Who started it? I'd, I'd rather not say, your majesty. Answer me. That's a command. Who started the fire? His majesty. His majesty? Who is... You mean me? I started the fire? That is what the rumor is saying... Your Majesty. Well, who started the rumor? The lion shall feast on him. All Rome is saying it, Your Majesty. Rumors are never true. I did not start the fire. But I shall find out who did. But, my dear wife and queen, there is no defense against the rumors of great masses of people. Mobs are uncontrollable. My darling Nero... There just might be an effective defense. Oh, kill everyone? No, my Nero. Anger will never do it. But just the opposite might. Elucidate. <laughs> the people directly affected by the fire will be homeless, angry without food, in immediate need of help and sympathy. Well, give it to them. Feed them. Sympathize with them. Make a pretense of great generosity. Not only will this avert suspicion from you, but it may even make you their hero. Oh, a faultless plan, except for one thing. If I convince them I did not start the fire, I must also convince them who did. And I don't know. I do. You do? Who started the fire? The Christians. You're sure of this? No. Need I be? We have only to convince the people. <laughs> oh, you're an intelligent woman. You are also an Israelite proselyte. 
Your scheming has all the earmarks of murderous designs against the Christians. There are far too many Christians. Death of the Christians in mass would be welcomed by the people as just punishment of the plotters against Rome. Revenge against the arsonists. It shall be done exactly as you outlined. Exactly. <laughs> His Highness is correct. The people of Rome welcome the persecution of the Christians. The Christians have been unable to prove that they did not start the fire. Paul is considered one of the principal leaders of the Christians. The blame of the fire can be placed directly upon him. Thus he will surely be doomed to death. I shall hurry to Rome and personally direct this campaign. <laughs> Captain, that Christian leader, Paul, is directly responsible for the great fire. Send your soldiers out. Find Paul, arrest him, place him in my darkest dungeon. Yes. How does my beloved Paul feel this morning? I'm grateful of your company and help, Luke, my son. Yet, I'm lonely. I long for love and sympathy. The desire for love and sympathy is implanted in the heart by God himself. I am sure of it. Even Jesus, in his hour of agony in Gethsemane, longed for the sympathy of his disciples. Through the long years of my hardships and suffering, I tried to ignore my inner yearning for understanding and companionship, yet <laughs> it was there. It is still there. Your presence, my son, Luke, and the visits of Onesiphorus bring gladness and cheer to me as I await the wrath of Nero and the thought of the resurrection and being forever with God and his loving, wonderful son, Jesus, my Savior, sustains me. Mm -hmm.